When you think horror, you probably think of this guy. And that's pretty fair. He's been around for a long time. He is the master of horror, as it were. But there are so many other horror authors out there that will leave you feeling unsettled. Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to A Fictional Escapist. My name is Chris and today's video is going to be 10 authors or 10 horror authors I should say that should be on your radar. Now I went over on my bookstagram a couple of weeks ago and asked for some recommendations for horror authors that weren't Stephen King that I should be looking out for and a bunch of you replied and I'm very very thankful for those replies and I apologize in advance if your response does not get mentioned. What I want to do is split this video up. I want to take five of your recommendations and give you five of my own. Now my recommendations may be authors that I haven't read yet but are on my radar as someone who's either been endorsed by Stephen King or just sort of come up as a, a new horror author that I should be reading and prioritizing over maybe some of these older names. Now I'm not, don't get me wrong, I think Stephen King is a great author. I think people like Dean Koontz who was published around the same time and has quite a backlog as well. Uh, is a fairly good author. I think both of them have both underrated and overrated books. But that being said, there's a whole world out there. And I love me some different types of horror. It's such a fun genre to play around in. So without any further ado, what we're gonna do is go one for one. So, so one that you guys have come up with and one that I have come up with. And we're just gonna go through until we get 10 authors. Starting off with a recommendation by the lovely Books with Brittany. She recommends Eric LaRocca. This is the author of Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke, which I did read in 2021. LaRocca plays with body horror as well as prevalent societal issues. Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke, uh, which was told primarily through emails and instant messages between two women deals with body horror but also deals with uh, domination and submission the dangers of bullying online uh, the dangers of being online and how far you would go to hold on to some sort of control or on the other hand of that give up that control La Roca has a couple of other books that I am interested in I have purchased You've Lost a Lot of Blood, which I believe is another body horror, but a techno body horror. And there's one coming out later in June, at least in Australia. It may already been, be out in the US because I have seen some reviews for it. And that is a book called We Can Never Leave This Place. He's definitely a very quick read. At least things have gotten worse since we last spoke was a very quick read. Uh, it's kind of gross, it's kind of abstract, but I think the messages in there are worth reading. Someone that I wanna try out that I have not tried out yet, but has endorsements by Stephen King is Robert McCammon. I know very little about this author except Mike from Mike's book reviews has been recommended Robert McCammon as a fan of Stephen King so that piqued my interest but these books are so hard to find unless you're willing to spend lots and lots of money. I don't know whether that's because some of these are out of print nowadays but I just had a lot of difficulty if not finding them, then getting them for a decent price, like a mass market paperback is something like $50, $60. And sometimes you can get a good deal, but I think I'm gonna have to go the ebook route. I digress. Two books on my radar. One's fairly popular, that one is called Boy's Life. This seems to be like a coming of age horror within a small town. It's, that in itself is, is quite tropey for horror, but I'm interested to see how McCammon does it after being compared to Stephen King. And another one on my radar is a book called Speakers of the Nightbird, which I think is part of a series, but we're following a main character called Matthew Corbett, and it is the Matthew Corbett series book number one. This series comes with an endorsement from King himself, which says, Murder sparks witchcraft hysteria in this thoughtful and entertaining 17th century historical mystery. That sounds pretty cool to me. That one I found for like $15 on Kindle, so I might give that one a go, particularly if it's part of a series and I like it, then I can continue on with that series. The cover has like a pirate on the front, and I've been reading a lot of books that have like a, an oceanic theme, which is dumb because I hate the ocean, which you've probably heard me say by now, but I still keep coming back to them because it's creepy. It's a creepy setting for me, so hopefully I'll like that one. The next recommendation by you guys came from Gabriel, otherwise known as What If I Read, uh, over on Bookstagram. He recommends an author by the name of N.T. Morris, who had a debut horror novel come out in 2021 called Elmwood. 
Elmwood has made its rounds on the indie horror scene uh, when I first jumped into Bookstagram sort of late August last year and I saw it doing its rounds there, got a lot of praise. I don't think I've heard anything bad about it um, from people who have picked it up. So this one is on my radar as well. I'll read the blurb for this one. It says, horrific nightmares have plagued Aiden ever since he discovered the body at the side of the road. The sleepless nights and his constant mood swings have begun to put a strain on his marriage. In a bid to reconnect, Aiden and his wife Laura decide to leave the city behind them for the lake house, a Victorian home nestled at the edge of the forest that surrounds the picturesque town of Elmwood, but every town has its secrets. Sounds pretty cool to me, sounds creepy, sounds atmospheric. The next author on mine is Anya Alborn, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. This author was brought to my attention via Bookstagram, um, following the Women in Horror hashtag, I believe. Alborn has an impressive backlist already, with her 11th book, The Dark Across the Bay, coming out late last year. There's a couple on my radar. I've heard that if you want to be scared, you pick up Alborn's books, so I'm, I'm ready to jump in. I'm very interested in a book called The Bird Eater which says 20 years ago the mysterious death of his aunt left Aaron Holbrook orphaned and alone he abandoned his rural Arkansas hometown vowing never to return until his seven-year-old son died in an accident plunging Aaron into a nightmare of addiction and grief desperate to reclaim a piece of himself he returns to the hills of his childhood to Holbrook house where he hopes to find peace among the memories of his youth but solace doesn't come easy Someone or something has other plans. I also have my eye on a book called Brother from this author. This one just has a one-liner that caught my attention. It says, a terrifying novel that follows a teenager determined to break from his family's unconventional and deeply disturbing traditions. I don't mind a bit of a family drama, so a bit of a family drama mixed with a bit of horror sounds pretty cool to me. Next up, we have a recommendation from Page Glue. This is Margaret Killjoy and specifically the novellas. He says that these pack a punch ranging from 100 and to 150 pages. There's a couple that I've got my eye on. One is a novella and then there's two short stories. The novella that I'm interested in is called The Lamb Will Slaughter the Lion. So it says, searching for clues about a best friend's mysterious suicide, Danielle ventures to the squatter, utopian town of Freedom, Iowa, and witnesses a protector spirit, in the form of a blood-red three-antlered deer, begin to turn on its summoners. She and her new friends have to act fast if they're going to save the town, or get out alive. That sounds pretty fun. The two short stories which were picked up by Tor.com or they were Tor.com originals, which have some really stunning covers that I'm interested in, uh, are called Everything That Isn't Winter and Into the Grey, which I'll pop up here. My next recommendation is an author that I've read a short novella or a collection of short stories from, and that is Adam Neville. I read Weird and Other Derelictions last year and it is by far my favourite abstract horror that I've ever read. It was a collection of short stories where every short story was completely devoid of humanity and it sort of encouraged the reader to put together the pieces as to why there was no humanity there and how the world that was so desolate had built itself up without humans or human interaction. It was very cool and it definitely put the author on my radar. Now I know that Adam Neville has a few of the abstract horrors out there. Um, I haven't read any personally. I think I've got a couple on my Kindle. But the next one that I'm looking to pick up is The Ritual, which I believe is one of the more commercial uh, releases from this author. That is on my radar for spooky season this year. Uh, and it says on the front, they should have gone to Vegas and it's got a couple people hiking. I don't know what it's about. I don't want to know too much uh, going into it because I'm interested in experiencing a different side of Adam Neville. Next up from you lovely people, it's me Jace recommended Anthony Horowitz for horror. Now that's a name you may have heard before because Horowitz has worked on a number of projects. Number one being the Alex Rider series, which is a YA series centering around Alex, who is basically taken when he's 14 to become a spy, and it's a, a YA espionage sort of series. Horowitz also ventured out into horror for some of the younger readers and has a number of collections. I found about six when I was looking through, and these are collections of shorter stories which are available to younger audiences. I think it's pretty cool. I remember watching some uh, like short horror stories which were tailored to younger audiences as a kid. That made me feel a bit creepy, but it also sparked that interest in the horror genre. So having that available in a literary format for kids who like to read or young adults who like to read, I reckon is a pretty 
cool thing that Horowitz has done. Moving right along with an endorsement by Stephen King himself, on my radar is an author called Thomas Old uh, Hoy Hoyet, I think is how you pronounce it, or Hoyelt, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Um, it is a Dutch name and these books have been translated from Dutch. This one is on my radar, it's called Hex. I actually saw the recent release that came out earlier this year called Echo. Um, on my bookstagram and I was like, well, that looks cool. I wonder if they have anything else out. So I did pick up this one to give a go first, just as an older uh, sort of book that they have available. The cover is sort of terrifying. I've just noticed that there is a face up in the fog up here. Not about that. The back of this says, welcome to Black Spring, a picturesque town with an ugly secret. A 17th century woman with sewn shut eyes and mouth walks its streets, enters its homes, watches its people when they sleep. They call her the Black Rock Witch. So accustomed to her presence, the townsfolk often forget what will happen if her eyes ever open. Ugh. To protect themselves, the Black Spring elders use high-tech surveillance to quarantine the town. Frustrated with the lockdown, the town's teenagers decide to break the rules and go viral with the haunting. Well, that hits close to home, does it not? But I'm interested in picking that one up, maybe in spooky season as well. I'm not sure if I'll pick that one up beforehand. All right, so we've got two more on this list. The final recommendation that came from you lovely people is Katerina Ward. This came from both Joao Silva and Stories Unbound. Katerina Ward has been on my radar for a little while. Um, I got recommended The House on Needless Street earlier last year and I bought it on my Kindle. I just haven't got around to reading it yet. And there was also a release, I believe it was this year, with the most stunning sort of like neon cover with like a skull on it and it was called Sundial I believe. Um, now she is definitely on my radar. I've heard that The House on Needless Street is very good, very slow burn but still very creepy which is sort of the the tone that I like in my horror so I'm, I'm looking forward to giving her a go as well. And last up on my own list is Dan Simmons. Now you've probably heard of this name from Hyperion Cantos over in the sci-fi camp. I struggle a little bit with sci-fi as you probably know if you've been around for a while it takes a lot of brain power for me to get into certain sci-fis like Dune took a lot of brain power and even though I really enjoyed those books I had to give my entire brain to reading them or listening to them at the time that I was and I didn't get a whole lot else done within that month so I'm not quite ready for Hyperion yet but I am very interested in Dan Simmons horror there are a couple on my radar. One would be The Terror, which was adapted a couple of years ago. I don't know when it was adapted. I hate the cover with the, like the adaptation cover, so I refuse to buy it. Um, I bought it on Kindle just so I didn't have to look at it all the time. I want the older covers, which look like this. But I also have another one on my radar called Carrion Comfort. This one also comes endorsed by Stephen King, like a lot of these on this list. Uh, and Carrion Comfort says, Carrion Comfort penetrates the darkest recesses of the 20th century as one man seeks to justify his belief that a secret society of powerful beings is behind many of the world's most horrific catastrophes. Ranking among the greatest reinventions of the vampire legend, this classic novel explores humanity's attraction to violence and what it means for our future. I like horror that has a deeper sort of questioning behind it, which is what I believe this book tries to do. Also, that cover is terrifying. I do not like masks or like the idea of Slenderman, for example, which is what this cover reminds me of is just, I'll leave it at that. That's it, my friends. Those are 10 horror authors who are not Stephen King, which should be on our radars. A very big thank you again to anyone who contributed to the video and I apologize if your recommendation did not get picked this time. If you do want to be a part of the conversation, you do want to be a part of more videos like this where we explore other authors in different genres and some indie authors hopefully later in the year, then do click my Instagram which is down below in the socials links. That's it from me. If you like the video, give it one of these. If you want to see more of it, then click subscribe at your will and I will catch you in the next one. Ciao.